Hello everyone, welcome to date third of May Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. My name is Sanchez Rodeja, I am working as software developer for at Adobe and today I present day 674 of daily lead code problem. The question that we have in today is shortest unsorted contiguous subarray. From the question itself we are able to understand we need to identify the shortest unsorted contiguous subarray. What is its length? This is what we need to return. So let's walk through an example so that we understand the question properly. Here the array that is given to us is 2, 6, 4, 8, 10, 9, 15. And if you carefully visualize this array, then you will see that this portion happens to be unsorted in nature. Since it's unsorted in nature, its length happens to be 5. As a result of which, we need to return this unsorted shortest contiguous subarray length. Now let's quickly walk through the presentation where I'll explain you the algorithm behind it and we'll drive you through various test cases. So let's quickly proceed ahead. Uh, lead code 581, shortest unsorted contiguous subarray. This is a medium level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. Also in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to ping on the telegram group or the discord server of coding decoded. Both the links are mentioned in the description below. Now let's shoot for understanding uh, the example here. The values are 2, 6, 4, 8, 10, 9, 15. And what is the naive approach that comes to everybody's mind when they read this question for the first time? The first way is to go for the sorting approach where you sort the entire array, you create a duplicate array out of it. And then you can use a two pointer approach to actually identify where the mismatch is, is happening. For example, the first mismatch ha happens over here and the last mismatch happens over here. Therefore, in order to make the entire array sorted, these, the, these intermediary elements must be sorted. We need to identify the, dis, the distance between the first starting index where the discrepancy occurs and the last starting index where the discrepancy occurs. And uh, the difference here would be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 5 becomes the answer. So pretty straightforward, no rocket science here. The time complexity of this approach is order of n log n. The space complexity is order of n. Now comes the question, can we improvise this logic? The answer is yes. How can we do that? Let's quickly hop on to the optimized approach. So I've taken a slightly different example to what was specified in the question. Here the numbers are 2, 6, 4, 8, 10, 3, 15. Let me ask you a very simple question before jumping onto the details of the algo. Had these elements been sorted in nature, how would this graph would have looked like? It would have been something like this. All the elements were, would have been moving towards the increasing direction and uphill kind of a thing. Now, what do you see here? You see the here that all the, since all the elements are increasing, you will never see any dip happening. S since you will never see any dip happening, we will be exploiting this property in order to identify the leftmost index where the array is going unsorted in nature. So what I'm trying to say, we will simply iterate over this array and we will check where the first dip is happening. This dip position will help us identify the leftmost index. Similarly, when it comes to identifying the rightmost index, what we will do, we will iterate in the reverse direction. Starting from the uh, leftmost index to the, uh, starting from the rightmost index to the leftmost index across this array and wh what should be the ideal behavior? all the values should decrease one by one. As soon as we see an increase in the value, that is the point where we identify the rightmost index. So let me just highlight that over here. Here you can see the values are getting incremented instead of getting decremented. As a result of which, it's a mismatch case. This will help us identify the rightmost index and this property will help us identify the leftmost index. Now we will be using the monotonic stack technique to actually identify these indexes and arrive at the solution. So let's continue how monotonic stack actually operates and have a look at it. Let's walk through this example. I have plotted uh, all these values in a 2D plane where Y represents these values and X represents the indexes. So let's get started. I have created a stack over here. The first element that we see is uh, 2. So 2 happens at 0th index. The stack is empty. Let's go ahead and add 2 comma 0 onto the stack. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is 6. So what do you do? You check what is the topmost value of the stack. The topmost value of the stack happens to be 2. Uh, since 2 is lower than 6, we simply go ahead and add 6 onto the stack. So 6 gets added. Now let's proceed ahead. Next comes the interesting case where we have the value as 4. So again we do the same comparison. 
uh, we check the topmost element of the stack. What is the topmost element of the stack? It is six. What is the current element that we are interested in pushing onto the stack? It is four. So is it a valid case? It's not a valid case. As you can see, there's a dip happening over here. Therefore, uh, this is a place where the discrepancy occurs for the first time. And what we should do, we should simply extract this index out from the stack. So this element gets extracted from the stack. We have found out the leftmost instance where the discrepancy occurs because here you can see a dip happening. Therefore, this is the first instance where uh, the uh, discrepancy occurs. We'll extract this particular index and store it as a leftmost index. So the leftmost index becomes one. So let's continue the process and this element is gone. Next we see is four. So four gets added onto the stack four comma two. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is eight so, and apologies. This is not 10. This is eight. So this is somewhere over here. So this is eight and this gets mapped. So eight happens to be greater than the topmost element of the stack. Let's go ahead and add it up. Eight gets added. Next we see is 10. So 10 is also greater than the topmost element of the stack. So let's go ahead and add 10, 10 comma four gets added. Next we see is again a dip. The element that we have is three and it occurs at the fifth index. So we will do the same thing again. Since three happens to be lower in value than the topmost element of the stack, you'll pull out those elements out. So this element is gone. Since this element is gone, we'll check what is its index. The index happens to be four. So out of four and one, which is lower one, uh, one is lower one. So the answer remains one. Let's proceed ahead. The next element that we see is eight. Eight is again greater in value than three. As a result of which we, we have to delete this up. At what index does eight occur? Eight occurs at three. Three out of three and one, which one is the lower one? One is the lower one. As a result of which left remains as it is. The next element in the stack happens to be four comma two. Again, four is greater in value than three. Therefore, we'll have to delete this up. When we are deleting this up, what do we do? We check the index where it occurs. It occurs at two out of two and one. Which one is the lower one? One is the lower one. As a result of it, the leftmost index stays as it is. Next we see is two comma zero. Uh, here you will see that two happens to be lower than three. As a result of which three gets added onto the stack at an index of five. So now we only have two elements, two comma zero and three comma five. Let's proceed ahead. The next element that we see happens to be 15 at six index. The topmost element of the stack is three. Three is lower than 15. Simply 15 gets added onto the stack comma six. Once we are done with the iteration, what do we see? We see that we have identified the leftmost index as one and we are done with half of the algorithm. Now we will go in the reverse order to identify the rightmost index. And once we have the leftmost index and the rightmost index, we will calculate the distance. So let's shoot for it. Again, we will use the monotonic stack technique. Instead of going from left to right, this time we'll go from right to left. The first element that we see happens to be 15 and the stack right now is empty. So what do we do? We'll simply go ahead and add 15 onto the stack and it occurs at an index of six. Along with this, I'll create the rightmost index and initialize to zero. In the previous case, we were minimizing the leftmost index. Here we will maximize the rightmost index. So let's proceed ahead. Next we see is three. So three happens to be lower than the topmost element of the stack. That means uh, there is a dip happening and we are only looking for dips. So we'll simply go ahead and add three onto the stack and we are, we'll, we are exactly doing the reversal of what we did previously for finding out the leftmost index and three comma five gets added. Now comes the interesting case. The next element that we see is 10. So here you can see an increasing slope. That means you have identified the first instance where the array is becoming unsorted in nature. So let's update the rightmost pointer. The value here was 10. So let's pull out three comma five from the stack. This is, this gets pulled out and the leftmost pointer gets updated to maximum of zero comma five. Since this is gone, the maximum of zero comma five happens to be five. And this becomes the value for the rightmost index. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is 10. So 10 happens to be lower in value than the topmost element of the stack, which is 15. So let's simply go ahead and add 10 onto the stack, which is 10 comma four. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is eight. 
So eight is also lower than uh, ten. As a result of it, it gets added onto the stack. We have eight comma three. Then we have four comma two gets added because again four is lower than eight. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is six. So six happens to be greater in value than the topmost element of the stack, which is four comma two. Again, we are seeing an increasing slope value slope over here. So the value here is getting increased as a result of which this value gets pulled out. So this is gone. Four comma two is gone. And at what index does four occur? Four occurs at two. Out of two and five, which one is the maximum one? Five is the maximum one. Therefore, the rightmost index stays as it is, which is five. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is six. So six gets added. Six comma one gets added. And the next, the last element that we have is two. Two happens to be lower than six. It's a happy case. So two comma zero also gets added onto the stack. With this, we have successfully identified the rightmost index, which comes out as five. The leftmost index comes out as one. We can calculate the distance between these two indexes. The formula would be right minus left plus one. So right minus left plus one gives you five minus one plus one gives you five, and the length becomes five, which is in sync with our expectation. To conclude it further, let's quickly walk through the coding section. The time complexity of this approach is order of n. Also, since you are using stacks, the space complexity is also order of n, and I'll exactly follow the same steps as I have just talked here. I have created a stack of type integer. The leftmost index has been initialized to nums dot length minus one because we'll always minimize the value of leftmost index. In case my stack is empty, I'm moving from the leftmost index to the rightmost index. In case my stack is empty, I push that index onto the stack and increment the pointer. Otherwise, what do I do? I check whether my nums at the topmost element of the stack happens to be greater in value than the current element that I am iterating over. If that is the case, I simply re remove that element from the stack and I identify the minimum of that particular index and the leftmost value. The along with this, the topmost element of the stack gets popped out. If this is if this condition is not met, what do I do? I simply go ahead and add that index onto the stack and increment the i pointer. Once I'm done with this, I've successfully identified the leftmost index. Now it's time to do and identify the rightmost index. Here we will go in the reverse direction. The rightmost index has been initialized to zero, and we will move from the rightmost index to the leftmost index. In case my stack is empty, I push that element onto the stack. I reduce the pointer for i. Otherwise, I check if my topmost element of the stack is less than my current element. That means I need to pull out elements from the stack. I go ahead and remove that element on the stack, and I look out for the maximum value of the rightmost index and the element that have been pulled out. Once I'm done with this, uh, in case this condition is not met, I simply add that element on the stack. And uh, once the iteration is done, I have my rightmost index. I have my leftmost index. I'll simply go ahead and Identify the length right minus left plus one. So this gives us the answer. This is another corner case that you need to take care of. If my left happens to be greater than equal to right, I simply return zero. So let's try this up. Accept it, and I'm connected to VPN. That's why it's taking it takes a, a lot of time. But nevertheless, the time complexity is order of n, and the space complexity is also order of n. With this, let's wrap up today's session. Also, if you are not very confident about monotonic stacks, solve the daily temperature question of Lead Code, where I have explained the basics of monotonic stacks. I'm attaching the link to the playlist in the description below, so do check that out. In order to solve more questions of monotonic stacks, it is a highly asked approach in coding interviews. With this, let's wrap up today's session. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead. And stay tuned for more updates on coding decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.